Welcome to the Founders Forum podcast, brought to you by the Foxwell Founders, where we interview some of the hottest minds in D2C right now and deep dive on their area of expertise. Everyone that we interview here is a cherished member of our Foxwell Founders community of over 550 advertisers worldwide and are at the cutting edge of what is working right now. I hope you enjoy this, and if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Andrew at Foxwell Digital. And now let's get stuck into this week's episode. Here are Edwin and Tris, our hosts. Three best ways that we've ever seen to deal with this is it's one of the things that's working really, really well for our agency right now. Question of the week, right? <laughs> He's going to spill all the tea on TikTok for us. What is the oh wow strategy of the if moment? It's working. If it ain't broke, don't, don't fix, fix it. it. <laughs> Who buys it even at that time, right? <laughs> All right, guys, we got another one for you today. We are talking everything Amazon. We have Jeff Bekovic. He is the whole shebang when it comes to Amazon. He has had the owner's side. He has run the agency. He is currently the CRO of Swift Start. They have generated over $100 million for their customers, but he does it all. He's been on the owner's side. He's gone all the way to the agency side. Jeff, welcome to the show. Happy Thanks to guys. have you. Thanks for having me, both of you. <laughs> Thanks, for coming. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Tris, kick us off. Well, what do we got? For sure, for sure. And, and, you know, thanks so much for coming. And look, you know, just starting us off here, you know, we've spent a lot of money, you've done a lot of work with different Amazon shops. You know, what are the biggest challenges you face running some of these shops? Like, what are the ones, the key ones that you're just seeing over and over again? Top three, give it to us. Okay, well, first of all, it's probably just dealing with Amazon is like the first one. Every time, every different client <laughs> with every different type of product, Amazon has a problem with it somewhere along the line. And okay. it's always a different nut you need to crack to kind of like get through Amazon's mindless bots, you could say. So oh. to get that, to, to get to, to get the, the product live or whatever it may be for the client. So definitely just dealing with Amazon is probably the first one. I think the yeah. second one is probably fighting, uh, you know, clients' perceptions of Amazon right in the beginning. So okay. often there's a struggle with the brands that we work with of they want to be on Amazon for the revenue, but they don't want to be an Amazon, you know, in quotation. Like <laughs> brand. Amazon, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Stuck and in that. so you know, they have their own branding and whatnot and, and, and trying to fight that and protect what they're doing on D2C and potentially retail to still add Amazon's strong omni-channel pillar can almost yeah. always be a, a big struggle, I would say. Um, okay. Yeah, and then and then the last one would just be getting their, their ad spend to a point where it's like profitable still for them to continue to grow because mm. Amazon is rolling out, constantly rolling out new ad placements. Um, they, you know, their ad revenue became the most profitable um, business, I guess, unit for them um, now. But I think it surpassed AWS even. And so no. um, really? we, we know that it's really profitable. Yeah. And, and, you know, Amazon being Amazon, they're just going to try to, like, keep pushing that. So um, trying to, like, kind of get through all the all the um, kind of non-important tasks, to actually get it to a point where there are generating a really solid ROAS or, or what we like to call an Amazon's ACoS, which is the inverse of ROAS, okay. is really important. What's <laughs> so, ACoS? ACoS is a cost of goods sold? Advertising cost of sales. Advertising yeah. cost of goods sold, right. So yeah, if you've got a 5X yeah. ROAS, you got a 20% ACoS is kind of how yeah, the math. It's the flip of it, uh, right? So tell important. me, you, you're talking there specifically about like, you know, p uh, companies that are probably doing you know, quite a lot of money on Shopify and, you know, they're just seeing TikTok shops taken off, but they're like, mm, don't want to be an Amazon shop. Like what are the benefits of going on Amazon? If you're already doing like $50 million on Shopify, why would you go on Amazon? Yeah, that's a great, that's a great, uh, great point. And I think um, it really boils down to just more ref more revenue and more brand awareness. Um, mm, everyone okay. knows what Amazon is for the most part, at least we're talking to us at this point. Um, yeah. you know, it's, you know, it's dominated by, by Amazon. Um, yeah. what we found too, is a lot of brands that we talk to that are our brands that maybe are doing 50 million plus on Shopify is if they're only is helping them with their omni channel approach, right? So an omni channel brand is more valuable than a single channel brand for obvious reasons. Like risk mm -hmm. is a big factor. And so 
retail, we don't really handle retail, but we know that for an omni-channel um, strategy to kind of actually have some legs and help in the valuation of the, of the company, it needs to at least have about 20% of your top line revenue per channel. And so, okay. oh. so an even if you're not, if you're on Amazon, you're doing like 5% of your total revenue on Amazon, 95% of it's coming shop, shop, Shopify, it may actually be more of a distraction for you than mm -hmm. it actually might be in terms of helping you with your end goal, which for most owners is, a, is selling your is company. An exit, yeah. Um, an exit. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, so we try to get so that So if you're trying to get 20. from five to 20% then, because that's a big jump, right? And especially, especially if you're anywhere over a million, like it, that's quite a It can a be a big of, jump. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so you're saying if you're going down, like if you're down the single digit percentage of, of your sales there, is that that you're saying it's distraction? It's not actually worth pushing? Well, it or... could be. Could be, yeah. I don't want to say that for sure. I mean, ultimately, are you bringing in customers? Uh, the Amazon customer is different than the D2C customer, uh, depending on the niche, right? So there are people right. who, regardless, are just going to buy on Amazon. Um, and we've seen, we've scaled brands, you know, up to millions of dollars on Amazon, like to a very substantial amount before wow. we start seeing what we would consider cannibalization of their D2C channel or cannibalization gotcha. of their, the, uh, of their retail channel where they mm -hmm. started saying, okay, we're starting to see some dip now in that. And mm -hmm. we're seeing constant growth on Amazon. Maybe that's the reason um, yeah. there's obviously so many customers for your brand. And so, yeah. but we, we like to try to scale as much as we obviously possibly can. For, yeah. For that. Yeah. And obviously FBA, so Facebook, uh, so fulfilled by Amazon, <laughs> marketer and me going Facebook straight away, fulfilled by Amazon is <laughs> obviously a non-negotiable by the sounds of things. So that means that sh is. free shipping is like a given, right? Yeah. It, sadly, sadly, Amazon does um, like to favor uh, if you pay them. So uh, FBA, there's two fulfillment methods. Well, there's three, but really there's, there, there's, there's seller fulfilled prime if you want to do it yourself, which I would not mm. recommend unless you have like Amazon level fulfillment systems yeah. internally. Um, and then you have fulfilled by merchant, which is you shipping from your own warehouse. And then you got FBA where Amazon ships to the customer and, mm. and FBA will nine times out of 10, nine, nine, nine point nine 9 times out of 10 always be favored over FBM. Right. And is that in the, you were saying favored, like favored by merchants or favored by Amazon? Amazon obviously loves that. Favored by Amazon. Yeah. yeah. And probably by and, merchants too, to be honest. Um, it, it's probably because then you get prime. So. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it makes yeah. sense, right? Because that little logo in there, it looks a lot better. So yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that makes a lot of sense. So I would I mean, recommend people do both if they can, because we saw during COVID actually when uh, uh, a lot of Amazon's facilities were really backed up. There yeah. was a moment in time where they did favor FBM over FBA because they didn't have the capacity. Um, okay. and so all the people who were doing FBM just immediately skyrocketed and, and double, tripled, quadrupled their sales. Um, so if you, if you have the ability to do both, I, I would recommend you do both. Interesting. And so, okay, so that's like you're sending all your stuff. You see, the other thing is the, the question that I often get is like, if you're doing Amazon, it's like, I have to send a bunch of inventory over to Amazon, like this tied up in Amazon now. So yeah. it, like, is there a recommendation that like, oh, start with like a couple hundred or like what way would you go and do it in terms of inventory management when it comes between FBA and your Shopify site? It's quite a niche yeah, question. I, I was interested to know. It's, I mean, it's a great question. I think, of, of course, you don't want to get your inventory excessively tied up in Amazon. Um, every mm -hmm. year, yeah, may, if not every year, every few years, Amazon's increasing their storage fees and they're increasing mm -hmm. their long-term storage fees too. Yeah. Um, and so if you don't want to have inventory, if you don't want inventory stuck up there, try not to send too, too much. We recommend anywhere from like 60 days to up to 90 days of inventory at Amazon. And obviously that, that, what that number is, is always going to change based on your sales velocity. Um, so that's like kind of a case by case basis. Um, but mm -hmm. that's what we recommend. You probably, probably yeah, send it. I like that. I like yeah. that kind of, kind of, you know, having enough time. So you, but it obviously depends on your shipping and then I'm sure there's, they take a while to sort it out when it's in, in, well, in Amazon as well. One of the, yeah, it's a, it can be a pain in the butt. You know, it's one of the biggest ways to kill your listing is actually by running out of stock. Um, and mm. like, and it sounds, I'm sure from the direct -to consumer space, you know, everyone can appreciate that. Like if you don't have inventory, no one's buying. Right. I mean, there's yeah. some fancy things you can do where you can like buy now and we'll ship you know, later, I think there's a few brands that really did great with that last year, um, with that model. Uh, but with, with Amazon, it's not really the case. It's, you know, mm. if you're having a listing that's really pushing and doing great, and then you go out of stock immediately, your rank is going to die. 
Um, and then and when you get your inventory back in, you're gonna have to spend to get that Im- that rank back up in their search oh, again. And so it's yeah. just Hang it's on. a bit of a vicious cycle. Oh. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk a bit about that because that's a thing that people probably don't know. They're probably trying to be too clever, right? Wait, so how, how do how do you how do you stop gap that then? Because like so sometimes like you are gonna run out of stock. Like even if you you've set ninety days worth of inventory, like let's say your TikTok mm-hmm. goes viral and then now now it's it running happens. low. Yeah. And then, and then what, what, what do you do? Like, what, what are the, what, what do you do in that situation so that you don't get knocked all the way back down? Well, you know, that, that's why a little bit earlier I mentioned, if you can do both FBA and FBM, you should do that. Because if, if you oh. run out of stock with FBA, that's going to always deplete first, right? Your FBA yeah. um, inventory. And then if you're out of stock at Amazon's warehouse, at least you've still got your FBM offer active. And you can still mm-hmm. be shipping to customers okay. from your warehouse if that's something you can do. Gotcha. And so that's why I recommend doing both. Amazon's check-in yeah. times do can take a long time. Like it can easily be two weeks if you send in an LTL shit, like a pallet shipment. Yeah. Um, if you send in with their partner UPS, it can take less time. But it's not uncommon for Amazon yeah. to you send in a hundred units and they say they only got fifty. No. Um, <laughs> That's oh, very wow. common. That very, so very funny. common. <laughs> um, <laughs> Something fell off the truck. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's um, it's it's very common. Or for you know, just like uh, there's so many things that can kind of go wrong in the check-in process for Amazon. So we always say like buffer like a couple weeks once you send something in just for check-in because you never know. And obviously wow. that depends on where you are. Um, we're in Southern California, yeah. so it's really quick. We're right right beside an Amazon warehouse. Our product gets checked in really quickly. If you're uh, from Canada, with like I originally am from Canada, it can take you know upwards of two weeks to three weeks for check-in. So, wow. Okay, so you got to be got to that timing needs to be fairly precise, and you need to almost you know be aware of how much how much Amazon may may or may not have on their shelves. Well, so yeah. you're saying dealing with Amazon seems to be one of the biggest problems that you seem to be facing. Is yeah. it is it just this, or is there other problems that, that people need to be aware of? Well, I think it's kind of like it's probably similar to like you know Facebook or any. You know, Shopify. Shopify is pretty good, but um, mm. uh, maybe or even Google, right? It's like it, at this point, you have to almost play by someone else's rules the entire time if you're in the e-commerce yeah. space, and like um, Amazon's no different. I think you know, I would say the place where Amazon can fall short, um, where others also seem to fall short too, is their customer service. Um, you know, something yeah. goes wrong, it can kind of be like fishing in the dark to figure out how to get it fix right like yeah, the messages yeah. are very mysterious and they don't tell you exactly <laughs> what's wrong and so you're kind of like pushing a bunch of different buttons so like that's mm. usually the hardest part meanwhile like of course right you're losing money because you know your listings are down and you're yeah. at some point maybe even your, your your payouts are disabled so you can't even get the payout oh, um yeah. that that wow. you're supposed to get so cool. compliance is one of the most important things on amazon that can't be underestimated um, mm-hmm. I find mm-hmm. as long as sellers stay on top of compliance, dealing with Amazon usually is pretty okay. Okay. But you have to be very proactive with it. So, so like, so for example, what, so dealing with Amazon is a huge challenge and on, in my experience dealing with Facebook, if, if you have to deal with Facebook, it's also a huge challenge. Yeah. Um, but we, we have our own systems for dealing with Facebook. Like there's literally a designated person on our team who like, <laughs> She's literally her her nickname yeah. is like the follow up queen. Like no one fucks <laughs> with her. <laughs> and so, with with you guys, like what what is what is it? What is the trick with dealing with Amazon? Is it just having someone that is just like a bulldog and just not letting go and following up like every six hours, basically, or like what what is what is the process? Yeah, it's it's honestly is a lot of SOPs um, there. Okay. You'll, you'll like after over time, you kind of learn there's a certain way of dealing with things, certain verbiage to use, um, mm. certain ways of kind of writing or presenting your case to Amazon okay. that will get a higher approval rate. So depending on whatever the case may be, um, you know, we have internal SOPs that say this is how you deal with it. And for the most part, um, oh. you know, it, it kind of will help us at least get to a solution faster. Um, so, we also so have internal, yeah, escalations and, and et cetera. So let's so. dish. So like, for example, like, <laughs> b- because th- this is helpful for people, right? Like, yeah. what, is, what is your most common one? And like, and, and what is what is your SOP for that? Ooh, okay, most common one. 
Um, I'm trying to think about what that would be. Um, I would say that probably the most common one is generally just a listing going down for not having the right compliance document. So let's just say it's a food oh. product. Um, okay. Amazon will require compliance based documents to ensure like the product is properly tested and, you know, people aren't going to get sick when they start buying this product on Amazon, which is good. And they should do that. Um, yeah, yeah. It, however, a lot of times when you submit that document, um, Amazon's like, Hey, this is not the right one, or we can't read this. Um, so, you know, oh. our processes would, you know, basically is, you know, PDF kind of like enhancement right off the bat, just to make sure everything is very, very legible. Um, okay. Uh, and then it's really just going through there. I mean, it's hard to explain on the phone, but like, cause there's like so many steps on their internal solo central escalation process, but mm. it's kind of going through those proper steps. It's about eight, I think for this one, okay. we kind of go through. And then you, if that's not the case, we do have actually an internal email to someone at Amazon. That's not an automated system that we escalate it to in that case. We try not to mm. abuse that, but usually when we do that, we get, we get clearance um, the majority of the time, I would say. So, yeah, I'd honestly. say, and the, 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 the thing is, is like, you know, more so Amazon than, than Facebook is kind of having somebody who has done this before and goes, okay, these are the eight, nine things you step one, do this step yeah. two, and then you're clear. Like it's kind of the same with, with, when we're running Facebook ads, we've got to be super clear and like, okay, it doesn't have any needles in it. There's no before and after pictures. So you know you're going to get clearance and it's, it's, it, you're not going to get your account banned for, for stupid yeah. stuff. And, and a lot of this can be solved too. With, and I know it's like boring and no one wants to do it, but it's like, it can be solved with just reading the terms of service from Amazon, right? Yeah. So just under, and same thing with Facebook, right? There's just, okay, what can you put on, on you know, I should say meta and like, what can't you put on meta? What can you put on Amazon? What can't you put on Amazon? And it's yeah. just... It'll get you like nine, nine tenths of the way there, probably. Yeah. And so, okay, so like obviously everyone's trying to, to find the edge. Everyone's trying to find the way that they can do it different or better because it's massively competitive on Amazon. And like if you think about it, it's not just search, but search people are going to find information. Amazon people are going to buy. So you're getting yeah. in there and you're, you're, you're getting there when people are buying. How do you stand out? Like what, are the, what would you say kind of the, the main things to say competitive in like really crowded marketplaces? So you mentioned yeah, food there. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it's, it's getting tougher. And if you think about it, it's a marketplace. That's kind of what a marketplace is almost designed to do. Um, mm -hmm. Any marketplace out there is eventually going to become like a bit of a race to the bottom where you have a lot of people selling the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. And the people with either the best cost of goods, most efficient operations, or most money are going to ultimately win. Um, mm -hmm. But... Um, Things that like I would say just like mostly like any seller can do to stand out is we kind of look like to look at it as a funnel, right? So yeah. you've got your impressions, you've got your clicks, you've got your add to carts and you've got your purchases, right? So yeah. um, when someone comes on the search result page or the SERPs, we want to kind of like focus on two things. One, do you have an image that stands out from all your competitors on that? Mm -hmm. That's going to drive take an impression to a click ultimately. Um, mm -hmm that and then also how much what are you doing to take up that search result real estate so if okay, someone types right. in baby diapers and you have one listing um and okay. your competitor has three well they have they're taking up three fourths or sorry i should say three fifths of the main spot um okay. right away we say three three different products or three different yeah they could have three different product. products showing up for that keyword search right okay. um and so what we like to do is we like to be strategic with variations for, for our clients too, right? So if you have a one pack, a two pack, a three pack, um, maybe breaking those out to actually be separate listings. So you're actually showing up in more than one, um, one gotcha. listing spot and taking up that okay. space. Cause the first, the first few spots take up the vast majority, yes. just like yeah. Google of the, of the yeah. clips. Right. And then Amazon after that has a sponsor brand ad, um, or sponsor product ad, Above the organic search is a sponsored brand ad. And then below then there's like, I think two more ad slots. And then there's one more organic slot at the very bottom of the page. And then no one goes to the second right. page. So it's like 10 <laughs> organic spots you can make <laughs> yeah. on the first page. Everything else is paid. Um, so yeah, right. so it's really important to try to make that get yeah, that kind of stand out uh, on those two things. Take up more okay. real estate, have a more have an image that stands out. Okay. Um, 
And will really? click through rate be affected? Obviously, a stupid question, but click through rate will be affected by how good the image is. Is there any tips yeah. on an image that you'd be like, hey, make sure it's colorful? Is there anything like I'm sure colorful is obviously a standard thing, but like, does it have to be on a white background or is there anything? It has to be on a white thing? background. Yeah, that is, okay. so that is the one kind of crappy thing is you can't change it. There are actually some category exceptions to that, but not many. Um, mm -hmm. It, it does have to be on a white background, like rule of the thumb, I would say. But if everyone is colorful, maybe you don't want to be colorful. Maybe you want to be kind of grayscale or like more okay. brown looking or, or whatever. Um, it, usually it does is more colorful is a good way to win. Um, okay. You want to show the product um, kind of in, in the light that the customer might be receiving it. So if it comes in a really nice box, show that maybe in the background behind the actual product. Mm -hmm. um, we like to say like, we take up the most of the white spaces you can with the product image. So have a nice is like zoomed up shot. Don't, you know, don't leave a lot of white space on the image is a big one. Mm -hmm. And generally too, for main images, we like to do very lifelike renders as well. Yeah. Um, and not rely on photos because those seem to convert at a higher rate. When you say lifelike oh. renders, like what are we saying? Like person using the product or is it like, no, what are we talking about? Not for about? the main image because the main image can only have the product and that's it oh, on a white background. So it's very Drinking limited. A water bottle. Okay. Yeah, but it'd be it's like, like, you know, you know, Tris, if you had like a, you know, your photo in the back or a book in, the, in your background, right? Like, you know, yeah. instead of just like taking a photo of that book, right? Like actually get it rendered and make it look nice. That will convert higher. So like so, nice yeah. and close up here. Sorry, the yeah. humble brag here on what I'm reading, but like- It's a good like book. The, 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 yeah, like, <laughs> but the idea, you've got your your product just there. And I've seen a lot of ones where it's the product and then it's got what we call in meta, the anatomy of a product. So you say call to actions on the, on the actual image. Is that something you do or kind of not even call to actions, but you might have like the, the the stuff off the back of it on the, like you say it's a book or whatever it is if it's a water bottle it's like glass it will never rust or something like that you know that like the, the benefits the the the, the, yeah. the usps coming out of it on the actual oh, product yeah. image yeah you, you so you got you've got generally six image slots for the most part generally speaking um okay. and then you've got a slot for a video um okay which oh, nice. takes up the seventh slot um so the main image is your main image, you know, it's white background product can't do much other than what I just spoke about. And then mm -hmm. your remaining five images, that's where you can jump into, uh, you know, infographics. We usually do about two on a listing. Um, okay. You've got your lifestyle images. So obviously people showing your product in use um, mm -hmm. is a really important one. We like to do, a, you know, an us versus them. That's usually the most important one. We usually put that as a second image. Because it's oh. like immediately you want to tell that consumer, okay, like okay. why are you here and why are you not on someone else's listing? Okay. Um, and why should you buy? And so that's usually second Im image. Third image, I usually, it depends on what it is, but if it's like a supplement or like a food based brand, I usually put the nutritional facts with maybe all the mm. benefits. If it's a collagen, you know, like, you know, uh, four to five nails, stronger hair type of thing, right? Um, you yeah. put that beside your nutritional facts. Maybe you put a brag bar at the bottom saying you got featured in these certain publications. Um, uh, usually on the fourth fourth image, um, I like to kind of do a bit of a uh, a lifestyle image again. Like now, maybe we're showing maybe we're showing the collagen. It's got ten grams of collagen, nine grams of protein. Kind of like a nice mm -hmm. lifelike shot of the collagen. Um, fifth image, I'd usually jump into a little bit more of a uh, Again, like uh, using the collagen theme, like how can like what could it be used with? Like you can mix it in with like your orange juice, or you can mix it in with like your <laughs> milk or um, a shake or something like that. And you know how many servings per container uh, is there? And then usually the last image, or maybe not always the last image, but one of the last images, you know, I'll jump into maybe like more of a brand based image. So like, why do you want to buy from this brand um, specifically? The, the comparison chart is more of like the product base in the beginning. So like why this product, why not that product? And then this mm. one's more of like, who are we as a brand? Um, okay. And like, so building a brand there is, is important, right? So like you're saying about yeah. like, you don't want to be an Amazon brand, but you still got to be a brand, right? Yeah. That's, that's and, and, and through all the image stack, I like to keep a very common color theme. So let's just say your product is red. I like to have red backgrounds on all my images. So it's just very like, Oh. very um mm. congruent and it flows it's not just like red green blue all over the place and just people yeah, are yeah, getting yeah. like going crazy so yeah. then you've got then you've got your a plus content a little bit further down the page right so yeah. uh, that is just another place for branding um that amazon provides um 
if you're an Amazon Launchpad, you get to be, uh, I think you can actually pay for it separately now, um, but you get something called A++ content, um, very innovative, I know, um, as a name, yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, you can add video and a few more like insert modules into your A++ content. And so okay. um, A++ content is just another great way to show brand story um, gotcha. And, gotcha. And, and highlight some benefits. And the and then so the the big thing then like I mean going back to the SERP like you've got your image but you've also got your your title right mm -hmm. and that's the question I suppose I'd ask is like I'm starting to see a lot more I suppose Timu style headlines where it's like you know glass water bottle that holds water that is glass you know this stuff in yeah. <laughs> crap out of it you know is that something that is is kind of a new kind of way of doing things or is that something that is kind of frowned upon in the Amazon community. No, I it, I wouldn't say it's frowned upon. It's it's basically what you're saying is keyword stuffing. Um, yeah. And uh, you know we we use an internal like tool ourselves where whenever we're writing someone's title, we kind of compare it against you know maybe ten of their competitors and we see like which one has the best kind of ranking score, um, okay. which is basically an aggregation of like the keywords in there, their search volume that they're getting. Um, mm -hmm. But you do, you need to be strategic about it too, right? So if you're just want if you're in the collagen space, like follow that theme, and you just stuff it with collagen. Well, you're competing against, you know, um, vital proteins, and yeah, uh, I think Native is the other one. Like these mass these brands are massive. They're sold all over Costco. They're sold, you know, they're one of the best sellers on Amazon. Um, try to compete on the word collagen, you're probably gonna lose. Um, mm -hmm. And so. <laughs> You you want to be like, um, you you want to be strategic. So a lot of people will like stuff it with keywords that are like high search volume to start. But really, you should actually stuff it with your title with keywords that are lower search volume. Okay. And actually oh. get that rank traction on those lower search volume keywords. And then once you gotcha. So is... tell us. So me me and Trish, we were chatting about this before, and I always am a big fanboy of Amazon product descriptions. Like they they are the best. And so <laughs> tell me. <laughs> Tell me, what is your process for these product descriptions? Because it's different with Amazon. Like it has to be performant, it has to be descriptive, it has to be everything all at once. Yeah. And so tell me what that process is like for you guys. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'll jump in for product description. I'll also include bullet points too. Yeah. A lot of people will eat up their product description space with A plus content. So like when you put A plus content, it'll kind of over go over your product description so you can't see it. Um, mm -hmm. Our process for, for, for starting with the bullet points, the five bullet points, obviously we want to focus on making the five bullet titles stand out. So whether that be bolding them, putting like a little emoji beside them so they stick out, that's applicable to whatever the bullet point is. That's, those are some good strategies. Um, mm -hmm. You want to make sure you fall, you fall within the ranking character amount, which I, I don't quote me on this because I haven't, uh, done it in a little bit, but I think it's like 200 characters. I might have changed to just updated though per, per bullet and it might be one I'll have to look it up. Sorry. Um, sorry. but you want to put your famous, your five biggest like points there. Right. So these are okay. again, benefits, why they could also be like how to use it. It does really depend on the product, but ultimately they should be the major selling point. So a lot of okay. buyers do make the decision ultimately based on the title and the image stack and the price. That's so like kind of the big three. Uh, and then product mm. description oh. pretty much is like in mobile, like forget about it. It's not even showing up. Um, it's like, but like product description, what we do like to put in there is we like to just go, you got 2000 characters there and we like to just go a little bit more in depth at that point. Right. So we like to talk about yeah. ingredients, maybe the how to steps, um, maybe a little bit more of like, maybe not so much benefit driven, but more factual driven, like, uh, you oh. know, this, this torque wrench can, you know, work on these different torques or whatever, maybe, yeah. you know, weight so, or whatever. Yeah. 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 Uh, and does that like, that'll have, a, it won't have an impact on conversion rate, but it will definitely allow you to feature it a lot. If people are looking for very long tail keywords on Amazon, like you'll fe f uh, feature a lot more on that. Yeah, that, that they'll definitely help. Um, that's, and that's where we would say like, you know, bullet points description, put your like not as important keywords, um, still important, but like the ones that are not maybe necessarily crucial to your listing, put them there and mm -hmm. you'll still get picked up in Amazon's A9 algorithm, uh, for those keywords and, uh, and, um, hopefully we'll still drive some traffic from that way. Okay. That's yeah. nice. And so then, I mean, look, we, the, the thing we haven't been talking about that elephant in the room, 
the the thing that seems to be the most important factor and that we refer to it all of the time when we're talking with people about their Shopify, Amazon reviews. Oh, yeah. What are the reviews? How important are they? Are they, because uh, well, a few years ago there was that scandal, wasn't there, where people were making up reviews. Is that still a thing? I mean, yeah, I, I feel like probably people making up reviews happens all the time. Um, mm. You know, it, Amazon's done a really good job and they do a good job every year, I would say, of really like cracking down on the on, on fake reviews. Um, mm. oh. Pretty much every like black hat loophole tactic that you can think of has pretty much been shot down now at this point and they take it very seriously. So if you are doing one of those oh. tactics and you get in trouble, you're banned for life from the platform. So you're not coming back. Oh, so wow. it's not really worth okay. the risk. Um, I, but it is a very common question we get as an agency too, is like, what can you guys do for reviews? Um, and mm. quite simply, the way I like to say is, um, well, first of all, Amazon's got a program called Amazon Vine, um, yes. which you can, you know, give products to, if you're part of Launchpad, you get it for free. Um, okay. so you can pretty much just hammer that and just, you and know, you, I think you have what does, 200 what does Amazon uses. Vine do? So. Pardon me? What does Amazon Vine do? Oh, so you can send product in to basically Amazon uh, up to 30 units. And then like obviously the cost. So you have to bear the cost of your product because you're giving it away for free. Um, and then you get a review in return from like verified reviewers that Amazon has. Um, now okay. Amazon oh. will, you, I, I would, I would, I don't want to say cautious against that, but I'd be, you have to be very certain your product is good because yeah. Amazon Vine reviews are probably the harshest reviews you will get out of any review. Oh. And Amazon's already pretty oh, wow. harsh with reviews sometimes, as I'm sure we've all seen, you know. Yeah. Um, some reviewers can be very, like, one star because they didn't read the title properly, but now you got a one star out of it, you know, type of thing. So, yeah. um, and Vine's even more aggressive. So if your product is not good or if there's something like very a false claim on your product or uh, there's something you're not confident your product can do and you're claiming it does or not clear, I would actually refrain away from that because you probably will um, just pay to get one star reviews, which is you're pretty much screwed Whoa. at that point. So I would yeah. stay away from that in that sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds it sounds like you're not wrong about that. Uh, it seems like the hardest part about Amazon is Amazon. <laughs> yeah, than well, and, and I think well, the thing with Amazon is like they're trying to make it, you know, and, and I think it's a good thing overall is that they do want brand brands to start to grow there. Right. And that's mm. where this review manipulation is going away because if you, again, if you created a community for your brand and you put a lot of hard work and sweat into it and you built an, a, an audience, that audience will find you on Amazon and you can do some, mm -hmm. some things to help that obviously like the email campaigns, but um, mm -hmm. that's the type of customers they kind of want coming in to buy their products and they don't want someone who's ripped your product off and selling it for a third of the price, who's trying to manipulate yeah. reviews, who's got no brand presence or following. It's just some yeah. random person selling it from a basement. So. so so let's talk about, so they want brand brands on, but there are so many, right? Like throughout this whole conversation, we talk about, you know, FBA, the cost of ads. There's mm -hmm. so many fees and it shrinks that margin so much. Mm -hmm. Like at the end of the day, what are these people walking away with like because i imagine the 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 pro of amazon is just the sheer volume but yeah. like what's the realistic end of the day net margin that that people generally expect and based on of course it's different on different aovs and so tell tell us what that looks like at different aovs yeah i mean i could probably kind of like pull something up and, and kind of give you it it's 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 not only based on aov edwin it's also based on like your um the size of your product. So like basically on the fulfillment tier is going to be obviously the bigger the product uh, you've got, you know, you got small and light, you've got large standard, you've got like a small oversized, oversized, large oversized products. And all of them have different FBA fees for fulfillment, but also for storage and long-term storage fees. So all that can factor in uh, at some point, obviously to your bottom line, but Amazon yeah. obviously takes a referral fee, 15% uh, for the most part. Uh, and then if you're with FBA, they obviously take an FBA fee. It usually kind of comes up to something around 30 to 35% that they're taking. Um, that's without ad spend, of course. Um, so yeah, if you're, if you're a brand selling for a hundred dollars, you can pretty much say like already, like you're only going to make 70 bucks now off of those fees probably. And then, okay. 
I don't know. I don't know what your cost of goods are, but let's just say they're 20 bucks. So now you're actually working with 50 bucks of profit. So you have about like $50 to acquire a customer through ads um, mm. or so probably even like a little bit less. Um, actually, when it's all said and done, it's probably closer to 40. Um, so they do take a very hefty chunk. And I think it's probably the biggest chunk out there. Um, yeah. So sounds like it. Shopify yeah, and TikTok ads, don't sound too bad right now. But <laughs> ads, like how much on average? Because we we always advise clients, like, look, ads should take up anywhere from ten to ten to thirty percent of your top line revenue, depending yeah. on how risk tolerant you are, mm -hmm. right? And so on the Amazon front, like, what what is the ads component on Amazon look like? So you, you're yeah. thirty percent just just walking into the market, you're thirty percent shaved off, and then how much more is that ad cost typically? within the range most of the time going to add on top of that 30%. Well, when you first launch, you probably shouldn't expect to be profitable for the most part. Again, depends on your AOV. Okay. Um, if okay. you got like a couple, maybe a couple hundred dollar AOV, you'll probably be fine. Um, but a lower cost product as in probably like sub 50, um, okay. you probably don't, shouldn't expect to be profitable right away because um, right away your A cost is going to be higher. So you're, you're kind of like you, you it wouldn't i wouldn't be surprised to kind of see uh, i'll maybe put in row ass maybe simpler just just kind of see like a one or like a 1.5 row ass in the beginning like pretty mm. small um it's okay. just going to take time to rank on keywords amazon has no history to your listing it takes that time obviously it helps if you got that audience off amazon that you can kind of drive to amazon that will will benefit you with there um long term we like to kind of see like an a cost of like kind of like sub 20 percent, but that's mainly just for like so that's like a five X row ass. That's kind of like for main, mm -hmm. what we like to consider is like maintaining though, um, yeah. your, your kind of volume and your, um, audience. So, so mm -hmm. if you're really trying to grow that, that, that a cost will go up, um, yeah. because you're going to have to be spending more on unbranded search, um, new categories where there's other people who are already established with their organic rank to try to get some of those customers. So your ad spend will mm -hmm. become, less efficient um yeah and so growing counts you're gonna have a higher a cost um higher higher tacos kind of maintaining accounts you're gonna have like a lower lower a cost at that point or you should be trying to at least Interesting. So. we'd have we, we could have a whole podcast on advertising on amazon yeah. it sounds like it's a whole because it sounds like uh, it's kind of similar bidding structure to like the likes of Google, but it's slightly different in that you've got a lot more uh, people searching brand searches specifically, like a lot of brand is is key there to defend. Whereas the old old Google would have been defending a lot of brand, whereas less that now is more non-brand. Whereas it, you, you, if it sounds like mm. brand is defending your brand on Amazon is really important. It, it, it Wait, is. Hold up. Can, can I, can I add that up for you and let, and let me know, like if, if my math is wrong. So if I'm running an A cost of a point two, right, which is like maintenance, and then me walking in is just between FBA and and all the other stuff, is like thirty thirty to thirty five. Let's call it thirty, right? Yeah. So thirty plus my A cost of twenty that brings me to a fifty, and then my cost of goods sold. Let's call it, you know, some people will be at twenty, some people will be at thirty five. Let's call it thirty again, right? Then that means after I walk out. I'm at 20 on the net. Um, is is my sounds math correct? About, sounds about right. Yeah. Is 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 that about right? Uh, yeah. I think. That, sorry, I didn't fully follow all of it, but I think it sounds yeah. sounded more or less about right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That. Sorry, I I think that sounded right. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> but, yeah, a lot of numbers no, there, but you're essentially giving thirty. To yeah, if you have the right messaging on your listing too, people will come to your site. So we only import the, the right messaging has to be important too, right? So you don't want to like just you don't want to just um, you want to be strategic about what you're putting on Amazon, right? It's just like what you're doing. Most brands are doing for retail rollouts too. Um, like mm -hmm. you're not necessarily putting the same skew in in retail that you have on your Shopify site. You shouldn't do the same thing with Amazon either, right? So if you're selling a two pack on your site, um, or maybe let's say a one pack, I would maybe like reserve the two pack for Amazon. Amazon is ultimately all based on value. And so it's kind of like, how mm -hmm. much value can I get for what price? <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And oh. so that's, that's really where the focus should be is like giving customers perceived value. Um, and it's kind of the same way in retail as well too. Um, mm -hmm. And oh. so- 
split up the SKUs because it's going to cause, as an omni-channel brand, it's going to cause you less headache in the future. Um, okay. Because then you won't be fighting retailer Y saying, hey, you're selling on Amazon for 10 bucks, but you're giving it to me for eight bucks. And so like, I'm making no margin because you're selling it for so cheap on Amazon. Now it's a fight between your retailer and Amazon. Best way is just to split the SKUs. Be like, you get you get sent A and then I'll put sent B on Amazon. So it's completely different or I'll put different packaging sizes. But then getting back to the kind of list I'm on tangent and never get on the listing, it's, you, you can do some things to point them back to the site, right? So you can be like, in your A plus content, you can be like, hey, if you want the five pack of this, that's on our website, go there. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait, Jeff. Let, let, let's let's roll back to that tangent because I love that tangent, sure. and that's actually one of the questions that that I I get a lot. And so we have customers that maybe they are doing a good clip on on D 2 C, and they want to go on Amazon, right? But they they don't want to get cannibalized on by Amazon because Amazon shipping is just so much better, mm-hmm. right? Like if if I'm selling a water bottle, and then Amazon has the same water bottle, like they're buying it off Amazon because there's prime and like one day shipping is normal now, which is yeah. mind blowing. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, and so go, so you said ways to differentiate are, are different SKUs, right? So like basically different products, I'll, I'll have a silver one on my site and I'll have a red one, on Amazon, different packs. And then what, what else, what else do you say to those people that they don't want their D to C to get cannibalized, but they still want that Amazon Apple? They still want to bite of that Amazon Apple. Yeah, um, I mean, really, those are the main. Well, those are the main ones because at that point, it kind of gets a lot of for a lot of brands. It gets to point to like developing of new SKUs, right? And that's a like I said, that's a deeper conversation of like what products do you want to launch? Um, if you're only looking at your catalog the way it is today, and you're not factoring in anything else, um, mm-hmm. I would say the easiest way to get on Amazon is just to either create a unique bundle that you don't have on your site and you can put it on Amazon or create different pack sizes that you don't have on your site that you can put on Amazon. And that will mm-hmm. kind of help differentiate out the sales a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. I would say that it's not it's still worth testing some of the SKUs the way they are on your website exactly on Amazon. So if you're selling a one pack on your site, still maybe try to sell a one pack on Amazon. You depending on yeah. your obviously on your on your cogs, you might just get hammered by a one pack and not make any profit. Um, but yeah. like <laughs> that's also why you see two packs, three packs, four packs on Amazon, because you can boost that AOV and yes, still sir. make profit. But if you depending yeah. on your product, if you can do a one pack, just like you know, test it out and see, because you may you may see that like on Amazon, you're just crushing it. And maybe your your cap on Amazon is actually not that high um compared to your website. Yeah, yeah. Amazon just like I've seen this time and time again, let's just say this is like brands get on Amazon and year over year, slowly Amazon just starts taking more and more of their customers and then slowly <laughs> okay. start doing it in a more profitable manner for them to the point, just because just like Amazon, oh. all the other channels costs are rising, right? For CACs, even, even more so than Amazon, they actually yeah. rise faster mm-hmm. than Amazon. So, um, um, and so, like, I know many friends who are running successful brands are just like, yeah, now Amazon is now like 50 or 60 percent of my revenue. And it was like 20 percent a few years ago. And wow. it's just still oh. more profitable because I don't spend as much. I don't spend much on all these creatives that I keep on like generating on like meta to like test new hooks and angles. It's just like I have mm-hmm. my organic rank, the volumes there. I have my margin profile. End of story. Nice. Nice. Whoa! So, wow, that is sure. that is a bomb right there. Twenty to fifty percent. You're literally two and a half x. You're what you had as a percentage. It's taking yeah. over. It's taking over. You don't have yeah. to deal with influencers. There are no influencers. <laughs> the downside is you don't own the customer now, right? So that's always a caveat to this, right? Is 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 yeah. you know owning that customer support. Oh, it comes back to ultimately, can you build an omni-channel strategy? And I think that's the best for most brands is trying that's to go that thing. route. That's the big thing. Absolutely. So listen, thanks a million, Jeff. That's been fantastic. There's so much we've gone through and with everything from listing on Amazon to talking about reviews and actually talking about margins, what you're going to be making on Amazon. So listen, thanks so much for talking through. Uh, I've been Tris. I'm Edwin. Awesome. I'm Jeff. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye. Ciao.